Thank you very much uh, to each and every one of you for this opportunity that you've given us uh, to share the results of GAS uh, in Kinshasa. Uh, I am uh, with Eme, Eme Ludebo, that is actually our um, uh, field coordinator. We have the pleasure to give you a summary of the results for everything that we've done as far as the international study for the young adolescents for the city of Kinshasa. The study of Kinshasa had the various components. We have uh, the quality. A narrative part, and after that, we actually entered in the survey uh, longitudinal survey. So, I'm going to give you very quickly the main results that are linked to those um, different phases. <laughs> Next slide. Like you know, the study for the young adolescents uh, is about the understanding of adolescents, and in that transition. Uh, from uh, the childhood to the adulthood, what are the opportunities that are there and how these opportunities are managed uh, as far as the gender is concerned. How can uh, young people can live as a young, as boys and men and the girls as uh, women? And we want to see how it influences sexual health and uh, reproductive health and uh, mental health. Next slide. Next slide, Peter. In Kinshasa, uh, the study is actually in the eastern part of the city. And in the map, uh, what you can see in uh, red, it's Kimbanseke and Masina. And uh, Kinshasa is the capital of the DRC. Generally speaking, it looks like uh, it, has, it has a shape of, uh, of, uh, of, a, of a turtle. And, uh, and I can tell you that's the poorest uh, part uh, as far as the economic aspect is concerned. Those are zones where we have disadvantaged populations. And that's also where we have an urban area that is not favorable with uh, less development as far as the urban aspect is concerned. So now we have a big part of the population that live um, with uh, difficult uh, living conditions and uh, uh, poverty rate that is more than 41% and electrification is very weak and everything that is linked to the urbanization is lacking. We don't have uh, water, we don't have hygiene systems and everything that is the uh, road uh, structure is not really in place. Next slide, please. So we undertook uh, in the beginning, we had interviews with the parents uh, and with the adolescent children and we had various interviews that were recorded and we used actually the health workers in the communities to identify those adolescents. And to do that, we had a cons the consent of the parents and uh, also of the children. And uh, surveys were actually undertaken in the health centers for adolescents and also in the um, uh, houses of the parents. Peter, next slide. So next slide. So during this survey, we saw that uh, the surveyors that actually do some surveys or for women should be women and those who interviews men should be men. What we found in the beginning is that the young adolescents in the poor neighborhoods of Kinshasa uh, really had uh, uh, body changes. And these body changes actually were increasing with the age. It was more pronounced for the people who are more than 12 and it was rare for those who had 10 or 11 years next slide please these uh, uh, body changes uh, for most of the adolescents it, it there was actually an increase of responsibilities at the household in the houses for example the girls were doing more tasks domestic tasks to arrange the house to clean the house to cook and the boys to take responsibilities like to go and uh, get water and to clean also the, the compound and that was more pronounced girls needed to uh, had more commitment compared to boys next slide please <laughs> 
uh, when we try to explore how the young adolescents uh, uh, actually uh, get uh, information on the norms of gender, actually it's the parents that need to inculcate those kind of notions to their boys or girls. And we have also restriction of freedom for girls, especially when the girls actually reach puberty, we start limiting their movement. We, we give them more roles as women. And the task of the girls, the tasks that are for the girls, as far as the social aspect is concerned, are actually achieved by the girls. And also, it also depends on the uh, various composition of the family, but I can tell you that it's mostly the girls that are actually cleaning the dishes, cleaning the house, etc. And uh, we see also that the parents actually limit the friendship of their children, the boys and girls, and especially the, the, the boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, because uh, the parents actually are scared of the influence of the friends and they want to control how do these friends behave with their children. And another thing, there's a limitation with the relationship between boy and girl. Before the children could... Dès l'âge de 11 ans, 12 ans et qui commence à développer les signes liés à la puberté, les parents commencent à limiter leurs mouvements. On commence à jouer avec les filles et être ensemble. On passe. Peter, can we pass? Peter, next slide, please. <laughs> and when we look at the behavior during this period, we noted that uh, the behavior, the sexual behavior that we know uh, started to develop themselves, but they are naturally common for the young adolescents, especially for the young boys. And we see that uh, Yes, some people that have a, a romantic relationship, and it's that uh, point that we see the influence of others. And many people are influenced by other people. And for example, if you have a pregnancy, how can you stop pregnancy? How can you avoid the pregnancy? And that uh, appears in the in uh, that age when the adolescents are uh, uh, growing. Next slide, please. Socialization of these young uh, adolescents, we noted that uh, we said that the, the standards have been inculcated by the parents, uh, but to see also the uncles, the aunties, the cousins, uh, that actually uh, uh, go to the family. They can also influence the children, also their knowledge as far as sexual and reproductive health is concerned. We also friends that actually close to the children. And I can tell you that the parents can actually limit the relationship with uh, the friends. And another important uh, element for the socialization of the young adolescents is the media. We have the media in Kinshasa medias in Kinshasa that uh, put uh, movies that influence the, the behavior of young adolescents. In Kinshasa, we have uh, what we call a Molière TV. We also have uh, Nigerian movies and the soap operas. And I can tell you that there's a, a behavior that is actually linked to the norms that uh, the young adolescents uh, learn. We also have religion. And religion is important because it influences the behavior of the parents and the adolescents in the control of the behavior, in the control of the norms. And we also noted that uh, the usage of internet and telephone for these children were less common. A few had a telephone, and those who had the telephones uh, could access to the content. In that content, we had the pornographic uh, movies, etc. And another important element that we found for all these uh, adolescents, the education is was very important. And to continue the studies, to go further in the studies, for example, to do universities, uh, it was something that was very important. And they were thinking that it was a way to access uh, to various opportunities. Uh, 
and uh, the future was uh, actually insured when we had studied and uh, there was also neighbor neighbors you know that in those various uh, neighbor neighborhoods in the urban areas uh, at a disadvantage there were no electricity we don't have uh, like a uh, lighting and there are many houses that are actually still under construction and they are not actually uh, fenced and they are not inhabited and uh, actually uh, those young people can go there and they can move uh, through these houses without the parents knowing and another element uh, that is very important for the adolescents it's the environment that is linked to the delinquencies and there are many young people uh, that's what we call in Kinshasa in Puluna the young adolescents and that influence and we can see in the second part uh, what he's going to do Peter can we go to the next slide Peter Donc pour cette première partie nous nous avons appris que les jeunes adolescents perçoivent déjà les les, les caractères euh, secondaires sexuels secondaires liés à la puberté qui commence déjà à apparaître And uh, we have uh, many things linked to the puberty and we have uh, many things that is happening for the girls and uh, also to the parents that are influencing and they are also media and friends il y a déjà une certaine un certain début des relations amoureuses pour les adolescents mais pas très très commun et les parents jouent vraiment un rôle important and parents play an important role so that we can have rules and regulations and also to play in terms of gender and there are some limits that parents are playing and there are also possibilities that they are giving in any case we have the role of the neighborhood for the friends and securities and also for the presence of uh, of the young people and what can allow mobility peter can we move to the next slide and here we have some photos for environment for where we are working and uh, you can see the place is not uh, uh, we can move to the next slide peter next slide please peter next slide can you à la suite de cette première enquête nous avons mené for this une... first survey we have a new survey and this survey actually confirm many things that we have proven for the parents and adolescents the when they move to adolescence and for the young age it's actually something that is very important for the new opportunities in terms of education the parents recognize uh, that it can give them the possibility to study and it can give them a, a, a very good uh, uh, future and it's a hope for the family we also have access to media uh, we try to compare uh, young people and uh, adolescents have access to media they have television they have internet and we have uh, social media uh, and it's very important for their socialization and also the learning as far as a uh, uh, sexual reproductive is concerned and gender norms peter next slide please with the adolescents the various adolescents have uh, some uh, freedom of movement when they were together we were actually blocking them from uh, walking around because we were scared that they could uh, get lost now that they've grown they have uh, freedom of movement and freedom of movement is actually um, emphasized with urbanization there are some places where there are no uh, walls no fences and children can go through different houses and they can go very far and uh, with age they can be sent to the market and to walk around in some uh, neighborhoods which uh, thing that they couldn't do before next slide peter please and in urban area the adolescents have more uh, empowerment we talked about uh, freedom of movement even though it was uh, limited for the young girls compared to the young boys but they now they have the possibility 
to participate in the decision making in the family. And here they have more priorities as far as education is concerned. Boys and girls know that for them education is the future. They give more time to education and that limits everything that is linked to early marriages. And that will open doors and opportunities as far as uh, empowerment for girls is concerned. Apart from that, we have a restriction of movement. Like we said, for relationships, girls actually, parents actually put more restriction in the relationship of girls compared to the boys. But in any case, uh, parents want to control the friendship of their children and to block the influence of their friends to their children. Next slide, please. And during this period, uh, because we have this uh, freedom, uh, we have this notion. And that freedom that the parents have, that children have, and, uh, and the risk for girls are linked to sexual risk, and they can be victims. Uh, for sexual behavior that are actually uh, bad for their health. But for the boys, it's actually linked to violence and addiction, alcoholism, drugs, and also to live in uh, the juvenile delinquency. And those are risks that can influence the parents to strengthen the uh, gender norms, for example. And those norms, like I can call them, can increase the vulnerability for the girls. Next slide. Let's continue. As I said, uh, among us girls, it's a uh, vulnerability to sexual risk, and therefore, uh, boys, it's uh, violence and addiction. And uh, here they say that boys need to be strong, etc. And yet, uh, for girls, they are told they need to be humble and they need to know how to go out because there's a risk. Because when she goes out, she can uh, get. Uh, Pregnant. Therefore, with that, we have noted that uh, adolescence is uh, uh, considered a troublesome period for parents because uh, the parents who cannot control children and uh, these children may be may face a uh, a major influence from peers and they are exposed to the world through television, through the media, and for such this may lead to disobedience and transgression of norms and family rules. Therefore, we have many parents who say that there's a big risk because their children are exposed and uh, therefore they therefore that's why they say that uh, children need to have uh, uh, honorable behavior therefore therefore this is uh, what the parents say that uh, this is uh, a problem of adolescence Therefore, I think that I've taken uh, enough time. I don't know if I have uh, to continue, if it's necessary, but uh, I think that we have given the summary of what we think given the time that we, are, that we have. Thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, this is summarizes uh, the study of the global study for analysis in Kinshasa. You talked about the objective of this research, which was to see the transition towards analysis 
and the perspectives of tutors and parents as well as the perspectives of for at least and the second objective was uh, to take into account the change in interrelation interrelation in in in, in, the, in uh, relations and you also talked about uh, the methods and uh, you had interviews with the parents tutors and uh, adolescents and you have finally presented the results that uh, talked about the different aspects first of all uh, the perceptions of uh, bodily change that come with age as well as the addition of responsibilities among us guys uh, you also talked about the gender norms that uh, are inculcated during this period uh, which are influenced by parents you also talked about uh, the sexual uh, behavior that uh, therefore i would uh, therefore give uh, the floor to participants from congo dear if you have uh, questions you have uh, the possibility of asking eric before we go to the second presentation thank you Deye. i think uh, that uh, we shall have uh, the discussion in uh, we shall have a short question comments we can check the we can give the floor to the second presenter uh, colleagues of eric can you add something we have our colleague from who thank you chandra for giving the floor I would like to say that with the GEAS survey, we have noted that gender norms are present and they are actually among us the youth and among us the parents. Therefore, we also saw that there was an important influence of friends in the youth, in the, in the young adolescent. Therefore, if I have to come back to the model presented by WHO on the first day of the webinar to say that when we see interventions in the young adolescents, we don't to, to we, we don't we need to look at the model because there is a lot of influence around them. You therefore need to come back to this model. Then we also have the problem of double standards that we noted in the study we have certain behaviors that are more affected in boys and girls this is a comment that i wanted to add before uh, robert says i would like to ask a question to eric what was the duration of the study in kinshasa thank you in general I think that uh, GEA study has been going on for the last 10 years. We began by the qualitative part, and uh, for the last five years, uh, we have been working on the quantitative part. Therefore, before 2014 or 2015, we were, we were handling the qualitative part, and uh, from 2015, we began the quantitative part, and uh, every year we have uh, uh, data collection period. What I can say is that uh, the, we have Professor Patrick Kayembe, who was uh, the principal researcher. He died uh, two years ago. He began uh, the work when he was a young researcher. And uh, now, therefore, it's more than 10 years of work and uh, and uh, eric has published uh, several articles and uh, we shall uh, share them therefore robert and other colleagues in drc is there something that you would like to add or to ask Il y a une question pour les préparer à l'adolescent ou que ou est Is there another question? Do are there any programs for youth adolescents? Uh, 
Robert, you have the floor. Oui. Bonjour, bonjour à tous. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. I'm very happy for the study, and I would like to thank Eric and the team for this study that is very important and which has brought out a certain number of elements, especially the environment around the young adolescents. We have a big influence from parents and we also have influence from close friends, but personally, I had a question to ask, as well as a, a, a recommendation. During the study, did we try to see if access to health care by adolescents improved the situation because it's freedom? Is there a question or an issue about access to care? The power because it's important to adapt the response of the Ministry of Health to improve the level of information so that the youth can have information. Therefore, we have a lot of influence around the youth and they will also have a restriction to some and the others are not restricted in terms of movement. Therefore, we needed to have a response in terms of the residential area. We have rural areas and urban areas. Therefore, I think that we need specific approaches to study how the youth can have access to information. Thank you, Robert, for your recommendation and your question. Eric, can you give a response? Uh, Didier Lukem, you have the floor for questions and comments. Didier, can you check the floor? and I work in the Youth and Adolescent Program. We would like to thank uh, the professor for this study, but uh, beyond the influence and the factors uh, linked to the influence of parents, we also have uh, the school, even the church. These are factors that you don't need to neglect. Be they young or quite advanced in age, they listen more to their pastors and they also listen to their teachers. And these have an influence. Merci, Didier. Rapidement, s'il vous plaît. Thank you, thank you, Didier. Quickly, quickly. It would be important to compare the poor areas. For example, how the youth in residential areas like Limete and those in other areas so that we can see how we can plan better. Thank you very much. Chair Leader, can you comment, please? Chair Leader, my name is uh, Mr. Mkreshai. I was one of the researchers in Kinshasa. I would like, therefore, to make a request. I don't know if we can share the result of the study with the researchers on the ground. And I have the question about sexual reproductive health of the adolescents. Does the research, did the recent time, did they bring out the pregnancy rate? Otherwise, I would like to thank the team for a job well done. Thank you very much. There are very many questions from participants in GRC. 
I think that we shall organize another uh, webinar for the UAB country. We have uh, Abdul Rashid Fatima, the director of uh, Adolescents and Youth Program in Niger. You have the floor, Madam Fatima Abdul Ram Abdul Rashid. The last question after that. Oui. Merci beaucoup, Chandra. Uh, you, merci, Eric, Eric pour cette Chandra. présentation. J'ai juste Thank deux petites questions. Est-ce que les parents uh, abordent les questions relatives à la santé de la reproduction avec leurs enfants? Ou est-ce que les enfants fréquentent des programmes qui les initient à l'adolescence et à la santé reproductive? Autre, une autre question parle de la transition, cette transition de l'enfance à l'adolescence. Est-ce qu'elle a un impact négatif sur la rétention et la réussite des enfants à l'école. Merci. Thank you, Barrel. Eric, you have three to four minutes maximum or five to because we are going to start the second presentation from Ouagadougou to listen to the differences and the similarities between the two countries. Eric, you have between three and five minutes to respond. Thank you, Chandra, for the floor. I'll begin by the question by Didier Lupeme. In fact, in the study, we did not only consider the parents and adolescents, we also took into account teachers because the study was carried out in school and also in the community and we also included the service providers because we have a certain uh, health centers that were near the schools which were taken into account in our study the next question was about the pregnancy rate we asked uh, this indicator and uh, we shall uh, bring it out uh, during the last wave because uh, there was a question that was asked to, listen, to see if they went through certain uh, events and uh, during these events uh, we shall ask uh, the eventual pregnancy and it will be the results of the next wave of results The question by Baril, the first one was uh, about uh, a discussion of security between parents and children as far as sexual reproductive rights is concerned. Uh, I think uh, that uh, parents mostly talk about uh, puberty and uh, at this uh, time they talk uh, to girls about uh, menstruation, but uh, when we carried out the intervention, we noted that there is an improvement in communication between parents and adolescents as far as the problem or issue of sexual and reproductive health is concerned. I think that Eric can respond to other questions. Thank you. As far as the question by Barrett is concerned, we have social norms and in terms of social norms, African parents does not discuss such issues with their children. They talk about puberty, as my colleague said. They talked about uh, menstruation from time to time, but uh, they don't talk about uh, the sexual part and even the sexual behavior. When they do it, it's as if they are therefore warning children because we talked about sexual risk and that's where they talk about that from that time when they find the, the opportunity especially the through folk tales and the experience of other they talk about it but the approach that was used in the intervention that was done to allow parents to learn how to talk to their adolescents as far as the questions that were asked are concerned 
we think that uh, it's difficult to ask questions uh, on uh, sexuality with uh, between uh, adolescents. Therefore, we have the quotative part, but uh, we put in place a strategy by using audios that were already recorded. The adolescents were supposed to listen to them and respond to questions in the tablet. And therefore, this allowed us to, uh, to avoid this sensitivity. Therefore, the, therefore, therefore, so that they can respond. As far as the pregnancy rate is concerned, it is true that the question was asked, but in the last wave, we noted that in the sexual behavior, many adolescents between 10 and 14 who said that they already had sexual relations and they were also declaring their friends are therefore it's possible to talk about this aspect because between 10 and 14, they already had sexual relations. And therefore, the framework of this study, we have another part that uh, we call it Growing Up Well. And uh, Growing Up Well is uh, um, a project by Save the Children and uh, Georgetown uh, partners and uh, other local partners uh, so that uh, they can uh, therefore uh, facilitate the comprehensive certification among students that is done in school through a uh, through uh, family life and uh, at the community level. Therefore, with that, uh, we have uh, interventions uh, so that uh, parents uh, can influence a certain behavior. Uh, for example, they should allow adolescents to choose their future. Therefore, they need to know how to talk and how to discuss with children. And therefore, with the community, they need to know how the community can uh, develop favorable behavior to sexual the health and the reproductive health of adolescents in the community. We, in fact, we have the impact of transition on adolescents uh, in line with education and uh, this was due to the fact that in a DRC, we have a new policy. Education is free. And therefore, the adolescents that had stopped education went back to school. But we have an important element to take note of. The socioeconomic context is very important and this influences adolescents. For example, in DRC, we have people who have not gone to school and they stopped because of economic reasons. And we have also noted that those who have not gone to school have families that are poor. And many of them were living with a distant relative and they did not have a good guidance to continue with their education. And this actually had an effect. We did not compare the rich and poor residential areas like Gombe and uh, Limete. We noted that uh, this information is real. Even in Gombe, the children do not uh, talk about, uh, do not talk with their parents about sexual reproductive health. Many uh, adolescents just uh, have uh, little knowledge about uh, uh, fertility, family planning, and pregnancy we obtained this information even from poor areas and they, they are validated in the rich residential areas like Gombe. I think that we can continue. If there are other questions, we can respond them with the time. Thank you very much, Eric. And thank you very much, Eme. There is a lot of interest and thank you for your question, for your clear and short responses. We shall have the possibility of discussing after the second presentation. Therefore, I think that we can give the floor to the second presenter. You have the floor, Ndeye.
Thank you, Chandra, and uh, thank you, Eric, for clarity of response. Now we shall give the floor to Brazil for the presentation on the results of the GEAS study in Ouagadougou. Good afternoon, Ndeye. I will share my screen. Is the screen clear? Put it in the presentation mode. Perfect. I would like to talk about the context of this study. I would like uh, to say that the GEAS study was uh, implemented in 2015 in Ouagadougou, so that. Uh, 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 this study was put in place, but in Burkina Faso, we stopped at the qualitative and the normative part. We did not go to the next step because Burkina Faso did not have means, and therefore the results that we shall press here are just the results of the first phase on uh, adolescents and parents and uh, the focus groups. We had uh, 40, uh, the last, uh, 40 adolescents that uh, were interviewed and we also interviewed their parents so that we can get their views on a certain number of themes. The objective, it was about exploring the transmission of norms and values as far as uh, gender issues are concerned uh, in young adolescents uh, in peripheral uh, residential areas of Wadugu. Well, therefore, it's uh, Wadugu that was concerned by the study, and uh, we chose uh, four more residential areas. Uh, we have, uh, we call them Doti, so uh, that uh, uh, we chose we we also chose uh, informal areas uh, the ones that are unplanned therefore we had planned and unplanned areas uh, these are areas where there are less uh, health structures therefore we took two residential areas from the planned ones and the unplanned ones so that uh, we can see the gender norms that are transmitted during adolescence and see how the models and norms are transmitted by parents. Therefore, the research questions was also mentioned by Eric. What are what are the norms and the gender? What are the gender norms and postures that are transmitted? And what are the models and norms that are transmitted by parents to their children? And what are the opportunities and risks for the adolescent? Therefore, to summarize all that, when we talk about uh, results we would like to know or to say that we had uh, interviews uh, with the adolescents and parents but at the parents level they have an approach as far as education of their children is concerned therefore what are the norms that they transmit to their children and uh, we tried talking about the solutions uh, and uh, therefore we also have uh, what they what they have in terms of uh, attitudes. Therefore, therefore, we have the results. There is a study that was done. And uh, we have uh, different realities as far as the channels of transmission of gender norms are concerned. Therefore, we therefore talked about adolescents and uh, we have uh, influences that were mentioned by the adolescents. 
because uh, Wagadugu is smaller than Kinshasa, but we have our uh, influence from friends. Therefore, there is uh, a big uh, difference between uh, adolescents in uh, formal residential areas and uh, informal areas, uh, contrary to Kinshasa. Therefore, as far as uh, the socialization of children is concerned, we can uh, already say that uh, the gender norms, there's someone whose microphone is on. Say, is it Chandra? Sorry, sorry, sorry. May I continue? Continue, please. I'm sorry. Yes, continue. Therefore, when it comes to gender solidarization, uh, Rick uh, said uh, that uh, we have gender norms. Uh, gender norms, actually, the rules that are actually on the traditional roles, and especially for the parents and adolescents. And when we introduce the adolescents to the biology, we can see that uh, uh, boys can say that uh, they have the strength and they need to do some activities that actually include their physique. But uh, contrary to the girl, they have to undertake some activities that uh, do not really necessitate uh, some physical strength. And uh, it's the same thing for the parents when we talk about uh, traditional gender norms. Uh, and the parents have the same uh, behavior. And it's also the kind of norms that you have in the society. And also, they also inculcate that in their children. And they actually adhere to these uh, norms. And uh, those norms are there for the boys and girls. And uh, I can tell you that the role of the men is actually to bring resources for the family. And the wife needs to be submissive to the husband. And uh, they need to take care of the household. So actually, those are the two roles that differentiate the men and the women. When we talk about socialization as far as gender is concerned, there is a differentiation of a freedom uh, between men and uh, women. For example, for the boys, like Eric said, it's the same thing in Ouagadougou. Uh, when we talk about the social space for the girl, uh, is actually there's a lot of restriction for the girls um, compared to the boys. Um, and I can tell you that we really felt it, especially in the informal neighborhoods, when what we can call the slums, the poor neighborhoods of Ouagadougou. I can tell you that uh, when a child uh, reaches a certain age, uh, when they can start uh, carrying things, they can start working. Uh, that's, for example, for the boys, if the father is a mechanic, at a young age, the boy also needs to learn how to do that uh, trait. And it's a guarantee that he's going to do something about himself, uh, even if he doesn't go to school, but uh, he can do something about mechanics. And we've seen that that's what is happening in the poor neighborhoods of uh, Ouagadougou. And it's not really the same in the formal neighborhoods, if I can call them so. Another thing we can also see that um, there's an important difference between the formal and informal neighborhood, even if it's not tangible. But we can see that in the formal neighborhood, we have a society that is, we have the middle class that has a different way of doing things. And there's a new way of seeing things when we look at the different roles of boys and girls. And actually, some mothers can say that uh, we need to have some uniformity as far as the chores are concerned in the house. Even boys can, can uh, wash dishes, clean the house, etc. Those are the kind of things that can happen in the formal neighborhood. And the objective of that is that uh, we need to have paradigm change. Uh, and uh, that's what is happening in the formal neighborhood. Boys, like girls, can uh, 
be in situations where they can do uh, some work. Like for example, like I gave the example of the boys who can wash dishes and, uh, and, uh, and the girl can also do something that can be a bit physical. So it's really important for them to learn how to become someone without necessarily count on, uh, on uh, the support uh, from um, the husband that she's going to have uh, in the future. So those are ideas that actually emerge from the formal uh, neighborhood. So the new opportunities, I do believe that Eric uh, talked about it, uh, access to education, because uh, that's something that is very important for both parents and children, and especially for the parents. It can open up uh, new doors for new opportunities because the par some parents did not have the opportunity to go to school. And when they can open that door for their children, it's actually a way out, uh, hope for the future. There's also access to information. When we say that the children have uh, needs the access to information uh, nowadays compared to their parents, and I do believe that those are things that Eric mentioned, and we also uh, noted that in our study in Ouagadougou. And we also have empowerment of uh, adolescents. Those are actually things. Uh, urbanization is something that is very important, and education is very important. And the, the decision making where parents uh, can say that, uh, especially for women, uh, now the children, even if there's not much difference, and uh, they, they have the choice to become, for example, if they want to do a certain things, they have that possibility to change things and to take decisions with their parents. And uh, even as far as marriage is concerned and all that. So uh, that's also something that emerged. And those opportunities uh, are not, uh, uh, do not really have consequences. So there are some consequences. Uh, there are risks that are linked to these opportunities. Uh, here, especially, uh, there are sexual risks. There's also risk of violence and addictions. And those are parents that actually uh, talked about it. And uh, those are not things that actually came from the adolescents, but those are parents who perceive, uh, who perceive uh, these uh, things like a real uh, risks for their children. And, uh, and in general, they associate uh, these risks uh, to uh, the, their peers, the friends of the adolescents. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, in majority, they are, they are poor and uh, rarely uh, uh, they see it as a positive aspect. <clears throat> but uh, uh, I can tell you that the peers actually came, came out from the exchanges and uh, with the influence that they have, the influence of their children, etc. So those are the same results that uh, we had in Kinshasa. I don't want to go back to, to it. And actually the violence and addiction risks for boys, those are the same thing. And uh, like uh, Eric uh, said, there are many parents, uh, it's a period where uh, adolescents, uh, when they have 10 years, when they are 10 years old, be it boys or girls, actually it's actually an advantage and actually it's sometimes uh, really a period of anguish for the parents uh, that uh, freedom uh, that freedom sometimes they cannot really uh, master that uh, freedom especially the, the freedom of movement that children have because of school because of the media and the traditional mode uh, of the management of the children uh, will no longer work especially in the informal uh, neighborhoods it really came out um, and where we feel that uh, there's actually trouble where parents uh, see that they are uh, they, they are really without any say uh, when they look at the reality and the external uh, influence and that will really be uh, something that uh, will uh, bring so much anguish to the parents um, and uh, the conclusion is that um, 
when they talk, they, they really mention uh, many things about God, that God needs to intervene so that the child will be a good child. And they really note that, uh, that uh, education is no longer able to help their children to become what they would like their, ch their, ch their children to, to, to be. So now they talk about uh, different results and that's what uh, we've also noted in Kinshasa. And the peer actually mentioned uh, because they have a great influence and it's a factor, a risk factor. <clears throat> So the implication of these results, and those are things that we'll share, but the implication of these results, we can say that this inequality of gender represent a, a patriarchal system that manifests itself in the young adolescents, be it also for the parents. And, uh, and uh, when we talk about gender norms for the parents, I can tell you that uh, this uh, patriarchal system that actually dominates did for fathers and mothers is the patriarchal system that actually dominates in the reflection as far as the gender norms is concerned. The interventions, um, we have uh, various interventions. Um, uh, the interventions uh, do not target the young adolescents, even though the inequalities of gender are actually intensifying themselves at that age. So to better understand what is happening, and I can tell you also the intervention also do not um, respond to the girls that uh, the intervention that uh, do not um, uh, respond to the girls that cannot actually uh, take into account the system of uh, gender that uh, concerns the two sexes. Because I can tell you uh, there are many panels that actually uh, sustain or support these inequalities, even among the, the, the parents, the peers, and even for the boys. So there are many things that we need to do so that we can really have a strong change, uh, deeper change, so that we can reduce uh, that inequality, that gender inequality uh, the, in the sexual and reproductive health. And these inequalities uh, cannot be uh, reduce uh, if they do not respond to uh, if they do not target the adolescent themselves because the gender system is anchored at all the levels of society we need a multi-sectorial approach and it's very necessary thank you very much for your kind attention thank you very much bazier for this very good presentation that actually explain the study of the GAS uh, in Ouagadougou, and we talk about uh, the part of uh, the exploration and research, and uh, I'm going to, summary, to summarize uh, the, the key points that have been presented during the first phase of the study in Ouagadougou that actually explore, like um, uh, Eric uh, uh, talked about, uh, the transmission of uh, gender norms for the young adolescents, and um, we also had uh, some uh, interviews with the adolescents and the parents, um, and the results uh, show similarity between the two uh, study sites um, with uh, the inequality of uh, gender that transmit themselves from parents to the children, and also expansion of the, the social space that actually is manifested more uh, for the boys, and uh, it is a restriction for the girls. There's also... Uh, uh, the change in the paradigm, the paradigm change uh, in the in the formal uh, neighborhoods, um, and we also uh, talked about uh, the empowerment uh, that is actually in uh, more pronounced in the urban setting, and it also linked to the risk for girls and also for the boys and the. Uh, uh, for the boys, is actually for addiction and violence, and for the girls, it's actually sexual risk. And in conclusion, to tackle um, uh, these uh, gender norms, we need to have a multi-sectorial approach that will not just target uh, girls, but uh, will actually touch all the, the, the society. So dear participants, if you have questions, suggestions, uh, we can give you the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Basile.
Bazier, I'm going to start uh, by excusing myself because I disturbed you. Uh, dear participant, <laughs> we, uh, we have uh, about 15 minutes to, to, to discuss with you your comments. Bob Mulumba, go ahead, please. You are welcome. And uh, and then Robert Kanke. Bob Mulumba. Bob Mulumba. Can Bob Mulumba take the floor? Peter, uh, can Bob Mulumba speak, Peter? Yeah. Yes, I have given him the permission. He just needs to unmute. Bob Mulumba, you have the la parole maintenant. Bob Mulumba, you have the floor. Bob, you are muted. Est-ce que vous pouvez? Bob, you are muted. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. And I would like uh, to thank uh, the colleagues from Burkina Faso for carrying out this study. The conclusions are more or less the same. I would like uh, to know. Addiction. Est-ce que au niveau du Burkina, les parents n'ont pas quand même de question? Parce que cet aveu d'impuissance, il est assez assez étonnant. Hein? Parce que avant Les parents avaient une même mise sur les, les adolescents parce que eux-mêmes disent qu'avant on ne nous permettait pas. Maintenant, eux-mêmes étant devenus parents, ils disent qu'ils ont un aveu d'impuissance. Est-ce qu'il n'y a pas des pistes de solutions qu'ils ont entrevues eux-mêmes pour dire peut-être que ça peut réussir si jamais il y a ceci ou cela Merci. Bob, est-ce que vous voulez parler Est-ce qu'il y a autre collègue qui veut partager leur idée? There are other colleagues who would like to share their perspectives, their questions. Our colleague Aisatu from WHO in Niger, would you want to say something? Chandra, mention that name again, please. A-I-S-S-A-T-O-U. L-A-O-U-E-L-A-L-I. Okay. Aisa Tu. Aisa Tu. Um, hmm. Maybe you can unmute everyone, Eric. It's in the last I can't see Aisa Tu. On the on the on the LA, list. It's L A. L A. Okay. Okay. Bonsoir, Chandra Moli. Bonsoir, tout le monde. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Chandra. I would like to thank the presenters for this important study. The question I would like to ask is about uh, the program of sexual education that is uh, in countries. What is uh, the impact of this uh, education on youth and adolescents? And how is uh, sexual uh, reproductive, sexual health and reproductive uh, issues, how are these issues uh, handled in the families? Are they discussed in families? what has been brought out by this study. The other way, the studies were very interesting and I would like to congratulate all the research teams. Thank you, Aisatu. Maybe you can respond to the two questions that you have received. I will uh, try to respond. The question, the first question is about uh, solutions from parents 
parents uh, always uh, look like they don't have power to talk uh, about sexual issues to their adolescent children. I think that for Burkina Faso, as I said, it's not a question that comes out formally from adolescents. This uh, lack of power is limited to the external influence on their children. I, I think that this is one of the ideas that is emerging. You therefore need to develop this issue. Therefore, what came out is that uh, you don't know what the influence they get from outside and what they learn. That is uh, the issue that leads to parents looking like they have uh, no power. I don't know if I've responded to the question well. Thank you very much. For the question by ISA2, we have many program, programs. And I think that uh, Eric also mentioned this. He talked about uh, the issue about the very young adolescents. We all know that uh, these are things that are not formally discussed uh, between parents and their children. We know that uh, adolescents have their own channels. Other people, for example, with whom they are familiar, not only parents. And what is the impact of all this uh, on their experience? We have uh, the indicators of the impact. Yeah, if I think that we cannot get the response now, but uh, all I can say is that they have other sources of information and it's known that uh, parents are not the first source of this information. Thank you, Bazi. Tene Natongo. You have shared perspectives and you have also suggested a recommendation. Would you like to share with us this recommendation? Natogo? Would you like to say something? Abdul Rashid Fatima, you have asked a question. Would you like to share your question with the Professor Bazi? Or can I read the question? Does the intergeneration dialogue between the parents and the la reproduction a-t-il été étudié dans les deux études? On peut entendre les réponses de votre part, Bazi et Eric et Amy aussi. S'il vous plaît, vas-y. Bon, pour le cas de Burkina Faso, je l'ai dit. For Burkina Faso, as I said. It's not uh, necessarily the case because uh, sexuality was uh, not a part of the objectives of this study. We were discussing about uh, gender norms and uh, Eric even highlighted it. There are very many aspects 
ces aspects-là. Maintenant, je ne sais pas si il peut revenir dessus. Eric, ou Amy, yes. vous voulez ajouter quelque chose? Eric, would you like to add something? Yes. As uh, Bazé is saying, for the big study, it was about uh, uh, gender norms and the behavior. But for GS Kinshasa, we had a question on the dialogue between parents and children as far as sexual and reproductive health is concerned. Therefore, in the in the basic study, the parents do not talk about sexuality as well as uh, SRH. They don't discuss uh, it in general. This is a social norm that is known, and uh, this is uh, something that's clear. But when it comes to the intervention and the program, we have put in place this program, and the idea was better every year if there's an improvement. Therefore, we noted that uh, among the children who are in the program, the ones who have grown and whose parents benefited from the intervention, this dialogue is begun. Therefore, parents began talking to children about to children about SRH their children, and they were discussing certain issues with their sexuality, and they were they, it depended on the issue. But now the question was who was beginning this type of dialogue, and the, the dialogue begins when the parents discover an abnormal behavior or what is not expected and they take advantage of that situation to discuss about sexuality. They can even talk about pregnancy, but generally the parents do not generally talk about such issues. And that's why in the program, we have added the service provider issue. Is Robert ask a question that has the, is there improvement in going to service centers? Therefore, we have a barrier or we have an economic barrier because if children don't have money, they cannot go because the services are paid in our country, are paid for other. But with the program, we had added the relation between service providers and the adolescents. We told them that if they had the questions, they could go and ask them, and this could help them, therefore, to discuss these issues. Despite this, the service providers, who in the same context, also uh, took adv advantage of this to talk to adolescents. Therefore, this is an ongoing process. We have another part of the project that we call uh, Growing Well. And we are therefore discussing with this with the children who are grown to see if there's an improvement so that we see if uh, with the age parents are now talking about this issue to their children. And therefore, we have certain areas that are not uh, correctly covered. Thank you very much, Eric. We can, please, Kulibali. Thank you very much. I would like uh, to thank uh, the speakers. Uh, and uh, my concern is uh, about uh, the issue of parents, because uh, we note that uh, if the connection between parents and children is not effective and we cannot uh, restore it, we cannot easily guide children. And on, an, on another hand, the issue of new technologies is very important because uh, 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 therefore, technology brings a uh, new knowledge and at times uh, this uh, new knowledge may be dangerous if it's not used well and the uh, parents uh, may not have enough information and therefore it might be difficult for them to guide the children. Therefore, we need to look for, uh, therefore, there's a need to look for information even on internet so that uh, we can uh, discuss this question so that we have uh, another way so that uh, we can uh, help uh, parents uh, and uh, youth uh, especially in their youth and their adolescents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam, for your comments. We totally agree. We just have two minutes, Eric, to respond to questions. What do you think about the role of health service providers on the, on the on the sexual and reproductive health among its elements. 
uh, when it comes to Can you say? We have received questions during the last minute, but maybe you can take. You can therefore take a minute to respond in Kinshasa and Kasai. Robert, are you there? Maybe he has left. I can take the floor. In the framework of the program in DRC, we have the ecological model. Therefore, for service providers, we have the national program of reproductive health and we have the friendly approach. Therefore, we therefore have youth friendly services and therefore the service providers are trained and therefore in the framework of this project in certain health areas we have therefore we have a training but the that were put in contact with other service providers to see how the youth behave different in different areas and we call that the collaborative learning approach and this allowed certain service providers who worked with adolescents to see how they behave and adolescents say that when they go to these health centers there are very many negative aspects that were raised before by adolescents and these negative effects are reducing and therefore the health service providers give them information, they even give them opportunity, and they speak to them in a very friendly way, and they give them good information. And in the framework of the Grow Well project, they, we need to extend this program on different health centers, and therefore it will help service providers and parents to talk to, about their children, and it will also help children and teachers especially teachers who teach life education and therefore it will help the community and the youth clubs so that we can disseminate this information as far as comprehensive certification is concerned and then we also have other information that we need to give so therefore we are going to use this avenue we also have a book on pbt that this can be adapted in all the system. We also have adaptation on the health system as well as the adolescent program. Thank you very much, Eric. We have come to the end of the webinar. The last word from Bazi and Eric and Ndeye. Last word, Bazi, the very last comment. In Burkina Faso, we use the longitudinal method. And therefore, we follow our lessons for three or four years, and we can see whether things are changing or developing. Therefore, we need, a, therefore, to extend this longitudinal study so that we can see the changes in behavior as far as the gender norms are concerned. Because uh, when we look at this thematic area, we need to take into account the well-being of parents also as they discuss with the adolescents and therefore the solutions are not clear and at times they might be heavy because they might even affect the society therefore we need, therefore, to look at these uh, gender norms and uh, have uh, a balance between boys and girls. So this is what I can add. Thank you.
Merci beaucoup. Par rapport à nous. Eric. Eric. Et par rapport à nous, nous remercions. For us, we would like to thank uh, the interest that this meeting has had. May I have young address in Satam and with the program GES, I have changed my behavior with my children, boys and girls. And I think uh, that uh, even if people have, are afraid, they need to use uh, different media, but it's the dialogue that we need most. We need to suit this dialogue so that we can uh, start calling uh, children and they discuss about these issues. It's a very important issue because good information can only come from parents. In DRC, many parents don't have good information. That's why we have uh, different colleagues. So therefore, we know that uh, we have very many challenges uh, and these challenges are also influenced by our cultures and our religion. Therefore, we need to make an effort as parents uh, so that uh, we can uh, therefore carry out a dialogue on these issues and it will be very good for adolescents. Thank you, Eric, and thank you, Bazi. The last minute, we have uh, therefore expertise in the region and uh, we have shared perspectives, ideas, data. I would like to thank everyone. This is the third and last webinar on this issue, and we shall continue this sharing, and we shall continue webinars in the future. Therefore, I would like to thank Professor Bazi. I would like to thank Eric Mafuta and Amy Mudeva. Ndeya, you have the floor. Thank you, Chandra. I would also like uh, to thank uh, Eric and Bazi. I would also like to thank the participants. Those who participated uh, from the pin up to now would like to thank them and they would like to thank those who presented and the presentation shall be sent very soon. Thank you.